Hello once again, this is Stan Houston. It's a Monday afternoon, early afternoon, and uh, we've had a busy day, and we're going to have a rest of a busy day too, both full of some uh, obstacles that we have to deal with, and I believe some opportunities that might come out of these very difficult times. Before I ask you a question, I just wanted you to note that uh, I'm wearing a tie today. And in fact, uh, I love wearing ties. The uh, solid color tie, uh, I think I even had it uh, about the same time Donald Trump came up with his Trump ties. Always have light ties. And so uh, whenever I want to feel good or I have an important thing to do, and certainly if I were going to meet you in your office, I would most likely come in uh, my purple tie. I love purple ties. And uh, so I thought I would do that because it makes me feel like I'm going to work, meeting important people, doing what I would normally do. Not just uh, standing here uh, in front of the camera in Studio One on Route 77, which is our route right here in Southern Arizona. We'll talk more about that sometime. Is it okay to cry today? Just thought I'd ask. What's the last time where you really cried. Now, I've had tears of joy, uh, tears of deep expression, but when was the last time I really cried? Because I was incredibly sad, because I was broken. Well, is it okay to cry, to grieve, in the midst of what we're going through? I was challenged to think about that, and uh, I went to a book uh, and perhaps some of you have heard of it. Uh, it's called Lamentations, you know, from the word to lament. And uh, it's one of the books in the Hebrew Scriptures. And I just uh, thought of this, particularly when yesterday on the news I saw the pictures of New York City, where, of course, when I go and visit my daughter and grandson there, it's a teeming city. But uh, the first uh, three chapters in uh, Lamentations say this, first three verses. Oh, 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 how empty the city, once teeming with people. A widow, this city, once in the front rank of nations, once queen of the ball, she's now a drudge in the kitchen. She cries herself to sleep each night, tears soaking her pillow. No one's left among her lovers to sit and hold her hand. Her friends have all dumped her. After years of pain and hard labor, Judah has gone into exile. She camps out among the nations, never feels at home. Hunted by all, she's stuck between a rock and a hard place. I sometimes now have to change glasses because of my uh, eye surgery. She's stuck between a rock and a hard place. One of the uh, stories that we have to deal with, particularly as we're trying to understand the human condition so that we can be effective and powerful and modern day Christian entrepreneurs, and all of us are that now. You are in a startup nation. You are in a startup situation. Many of you will have to start over career, business, situation. That is going to happen for many people. And we do know that the next two weeks for sure will be very challenging. Is it okay to cry? Is it okay to weep? Well, uh, what uh, the word seems to say to us is, yeah. In fact, it may be the role of leadership, it may be the role of people who have uh, much that they have to do and people they have to lead. And this does not mean that you abandon a spirit of optimism, of challenge, of opportunity. And one of the things I'm going to try to do in working with some of the people who have asked me for help is to see if we can find that at the end of this or through this or somewhere alongside of this, we can have a bigger and better future. But right now, it looks really tough and bad. 
And is it okay to cry? Is it okay to lament? Well, I think what the uh, writers of the Hebrew Scriptures were trying to say, and it's very, very powerful for us to understand right now. In fact, it's probably good to do that. It's probably important. Now, I oftentimes talk about uh, speaking and leading with a, a non-anxious presence. But for many of us, some dreams and hopes and opportunities have been scattered or shattered or broken. And just like the people of Judah, Judah had been taken into Babylon. <sighs> the Babylonians had come in. They had decimated the city of Jerusalem. And it was terrible. And many were killed and thousands of people died. And then a few that were left were hauled out. And in that famous psalm, how do we sing the songs of God in a foreign land? And many of us feel that way, and we kind of experience life that way right now. We've never been here. This is not the way it was. This is not what we were planning on. This is not what we hoped to be. We kind of feel like we are in emotional and maybe experiential and certainly business exile, you know. We're out of business for a long time. Maybe a short time only, but maybe forever. So I just simply today want to give me and to give you in this brief a little message for the day. Yes, it is a time of deep walking and thinking and planning. Boy, am I planning. I've been challenged by some of my colleagues. Stan, Help us come up with new opportunities. Help us come up with new things to do. Help us to find new businesses to get involved in. Help us to make it. And so, a lot of thinking, praying, planning. But also, in some ways, uh, a spirit of weeping. Uh, obviously, that I'm losing things that I wanted to have, and I know many people are. And uh, something that we were hoping for was lost. Something is gone, and we're going to have to do some things very differently than we planned. And God's okay with that. He can handle our, our anger. He can handle our uh, speaking back. And he can certainly handle our tears. As Rod Serling used to say about the Twilight Zone, and we are certainly in the Twilight Zone, just an idea for your thought and consideration. Pray for wisdom, pray for courage, pray for kindness, and perhaps a moment of joy. We'll see you later. Bye for now.